This is the first in a series of training videos for the new XVS G1 live production switcher from Sony. My name's Emily and I'm a freelance vision mixer. Today I'm going to be giving you an overview of its capabilities. This is the latest switcher in the Sony XVS family and we're going to start off by looking at the control panel. Now the control panel that we're working with today has two MEs and the panels are configurable and networkable and if you have experience of using previous generations of Sony switches then this will all look very familiar to you. So the control panel is made up of several different elements. We're going to start off by looking at the cross point module down here. So this comprises of four different buses. We have the program bus along here and the preview bus along here and this is where I select what I want to put out on my program. So I can cut along here and you can see that there's tally indication. Uh, so red meaning that I've got that source to line and yellow down here for it's in my preview. The other nice thing about this is that there's color grouping enabled. So for different, depending on what the source is, we can assign a color to it and then we can like really nicely organize um, our sources in a, in a visual way. We also have the OLED screen here, which shows me what each source I'm going to is labeled as. And then we have the key bus delegation area up here and the AUX bus delegation area. Um, and this is where I can, for example, select what source I want to have on each key. So here I've got key one selected. Um, and at the moment that's got clip three assigned to it. We can also attach macros to this area, but we're going to come to that in a different video. And moving down, we come to the transition module. And this is where you choose your next transition type. So you can see the different kind of transitions that we can select here, for example, mix or wipe. And you can also see our cut and our auto trans buttons here. This figure here is telling us what our auto transition rate is set to. And this here is telling us what our bank is delegated to. So for example, this is our program. Then up here, you can see um, these are the different keys and the background referring to what we have selected on our preview bus here. Um, so then we can choose to just come to background or we can come to background and a key, for example. And then I can cut or I can auto transition or I can use my T-bar to mix to that. And now you see that we've got key one live indicated by the red light. We can also use these down here to cut the transition, uh, the key transition buttons directly on and off, like so. At the end of this ME strip, we come to the flexi pad. Now the flexi pad is the area where we um, store and recall different memories. It's also where we record, store and recall different macros. So you can see if we go down here, we have our snapshot area. If you're not familiar with what a snapshot is, um, it's basically a way that you can save the status that you have um, left a certain region or functionality on the switcher in. So for example, if I had built two-way boxes on two keys um, on an ME bank, then I would want to save that and I would save it as a snapshot, which is like taking a picture of that. Um, and then at a later date, I could recall that. And so that's a really convenient, easy way to do it here. We have key snapshots here. So we have the different keys, the eight different keys that we have. If I click on a key, then it will bring that up in the menu area, which we'll come to in a bit. Um, but you can also see down here, this is where I would store the key snapshots. And then we also have the wipe area here where I would um, store and recall wipe snapshots. And you can see we've got this really nice visual display here. So um, we can instantly see what that wipe is going to look like. Um, this is where we would store and recall DME wipes. Snapshots I've already covered. And then shot boxes which is basically like a package or, or a container where you can have several different snapshots and effects and, and things combined into just one press of a button. Um, so that's really useful. And then we come to macros down here where I can select different macros that I've created and I can record different macros that I've created. And then down here for the banks, this is the, the, the banks, the areas where you would save these things. Um, so you can see I can flip through bank zero, one, two. Um, if I want to go any higher, I might go to bank select and then type in, for example, three will take me up to 30. Um, press four, I'm up into the 40s. Um, so that's how you save all of that. 
And then you can also set your transition rate here as well. So if you remember earlier, we were looking down here at the auto trans rate and that's set to 61. I can set that to something much faster, like 10, and then that's changed. Um, so this is a really key area of the control panel. Up here, we have the trackball module. And this is where we can control the key resizes. So we can use the trackball here um, to fine tune the, the adjustments that we might need with a resizer. Um, and we can also use these buttons here. I'll come to this in a later video. It's also where we can control external devices. Um, and we can control frame memories and clip stores and we can take clips and play them and scrub them through um, which is a really handy thing to be able to do and we can also control optional DME uh, for 3D transform control as well. Moving along to the last area of the control panel we have the utility module and now this is really useful because it links in with our GUI, our menu system and so if I want to fine tune uh, different parameters, um, I can use this here. So for example, I've got key one selected in my program. Uh, the type of the key is set to luminance and I've got the uh, different parameters adjustments down here. And if I want to, I can control it here in the utility area. So now you can see I'm changing my clip levels. I'm changing my gain levels. So that's a really nice feature. And then I can also set up different commands and different menu shortcuts. And I can recall these here. So for example, I've already created a, clip, a menu shortcut to a clip store and a menu shortcut to a multi view. So if I hit that, it takes us to the page in our menu of the clip store. And so that's just a really easy way I can get to things that I use a lot um, really quickly. Now I'm going to take you through the GUI. So now we have it set up um, on a touchscreen computer monitor um, and it now runs off a browser, which is really useful. We also have the functionality that we had before in Sony switches where we can use the double punch with some buttons to get to a menu page. So for example, I can double punch key one here and it will take me straight to that menu page. As you saw just a moment ago when I was changing the parameters for the luminance type here um, in the utility module, um, we can also do that from the menu page. Um, it's a little bit different from what it was before. Uh, so now if I want to adjust clip, for example, I just tap it and this comes up. I can use one finger to go down and up on the clip values here and that will give me fine tuning. And I can use two to have more coarse uh, tuning of that parameter. I can also select these dots here and I can just type in the value I want straight away if I know what that is. And then I've also got a reset button down here that I can select and these are for every value we can just set back to default which is really useful. Now, you'll be familiar with um, the menu system if you've used Sony switches before. We've got the navigation down here. And you've also got your sub-menus down along here and also down here. As you can see, I've got my monitors set to program and preview. But what you might want to do is put a multi-viewer in. So to do that, you will need to go to Setup, System, and go into your Outputs. I've got this set onto output three. So I'm going to edit that here. And you can see I've got a choice of two multi views here. Um, and can, these can be configured to different layouts. I'm going to choose multi viewer one here. And now you can see that it's come up here. If I want to change how this is set, I then go down into switcher and then I can fine tune this. So I've got all the sources selected here. Um, and these are matching my desk. Um, but if I needed to change them, I just click on the source and then just click what I want to change it to. With the multi viewer, it's, it's quite useful to have a clock sometimes and you can set that. So I'm going to put it where my AUX2 is at the moment. And just, I have a choice of analog and digital and I'm just going to set it to analog. Now, if I just play a clip like so, you can see we also have the audio meters here. I've got them set to them at the moment to be on the outside 
of these panels, but you can also put them on the insides if you prefer. So thanks for watching. In the next video, I'm going to explain how to use the power of the G1 to create some really great productions.